Hey, what's up aviation fans? Uh, Dave here and I wanted to talk to you today about something that happened to me back in April. And it's really kind of taken me this long to really begin to talk about it. And what I'm talking about is, is my very first in-flight emergency. <laughs> Stick around, I'll tell you more. Hey everyone, this is Dave, and um, I want to talk about something kind of serious this week. But before I do that, I've got something that's just as serious, and that is your subscription. Do me a favor, click and subscribe if you like this video, and also make sure you hit that thumbs up button and tell me that you want me to continue making these videos. Kind of going on a little bit of a lag as far as subscriptions and, and likes is concerned, and that tends to cause the algorithm not to play these. So if you get something out of this today, um, do me a favor and subscribe and like, or at the very least like the video and that'll help uh, bump up my, my, uh, my algorithm playback. Anyway, today I want to talk to you about something that happened to me and I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. I'm about a 300 hour pilot, about a, a little over almost half that time is in the Cirrus SR20. You've seen, you know, lots of different, uh, posts from me going to different places with the Cirrus. Uh, fantastic airplane. And one of the things I love about the Cirrus is the fact that I get really good uh, uh, situational awareness as a pilot. And situa situational awareness from a pilot perspective is critically important because you'll go long distances and times in that airplane with the autopilot on where you're just reporting back to ATC. But sometimes uh, things happen and it's great to have the information at your fingertips the way you have it in a Cirrus uh, to help you deal with an emergency. And such an emergency happened as I was going up to Athens, Georgia, April 28th, 2021. Athens is a KO code KHK. Try that again. ICAO code Kilo Alpha Hotel November. K A H N. Or as I like to call it. <laughs> I kind of felt like that way when I was coming back from Georgia. I went up there to pick up a business associate, about a three hour flight there and three hour flight back. And just before I was supposed to leave for this flight, as luck would have it, I got up early in the morning, I was ready to go, a uh, pretty decent cross-country flight, and my Concorde battery died. And the best part of it is, is it was installed just two years prior, the very same month. So it had just expired its two-year warranty. So let me know, put your uh, note down in the notes section. If you've had the same kind of problems with Concorde batteries, I pretty much take good care of my battery. I put a battery minder on it uh, when I'm not using it and I desulfonate it. But uh, I was a little shocked that this battery only lasted exactly two years before it died. Anyway, I had to actually fly to an airport near Sanford to land, actually where I learned to fly in the land airport. The land, of course, for those of you in Florida know, is a jump school. Therefore, you cannot overfly that airport. So just a little, little tidbit there for those of you wanting to fly into the land. It is the number one parachute jumping attraction in the world. They have more people jumping out of planes into land than anywhere else on the planet. So interesting little tidbit there. So I first had to go take my mechanic to uh, a uh, vendor in Deland who happened to have a Concorde that fit my Cirrus before we, I flew him back to Sanford after installing a new battery and then I started my trip to Georgia. So it kind of didn't start great to begin with. Uh, I was already uh, kind of under the gun to get out, uh, dumped him off, did my run up, got in the air and left. I'll post a couple of pictures of that 
departure here as I'm talking. So, you know, I was on my way, I was out of uh, Bravo airspace and heading toward, uh, toward Athens, Georgia. No issue whatsoever. In fact, I had no issues all the way up there and about 90% of the trip back. So this is where things get a little bit different. So I've been running the plane pretty much nonstop, like with the exception of, you know, I stopped in Athens, we talked for a little bit, I filled it up with gas. So it was on the ground for, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes. Got back in, did a hot start on the engine, and started my way back. Now, the interesting thing is that as I was going back and I did a hot start, no problem. I have a procedure for that. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have different procedures for hot start, but you know, mine seems to work good. Um, if you have one, let me know. I'm always interested to hear about that. So we took off from Athens and uh, initially I was uh, cruising at uh, 11,500 feet, which I requested because the winds were better. Clouds were starting to build, we wanted to be over everything. So I did learn a little thing or two about hypoxia, by the way, coming back. And uh, we were at 11.5 for, I don't know, uh, probably about an hour and a half. And uh, started to feel a bit groggy. And I asked my passenger and sure enough, pulled out my whole blood oximeter and discovered we were a little bit hypoxic. So I immediately requested 9,500, uh, was given 9,500 by the tower and everything went great. So, just my quick little, that's not the emergency. In fact, that was nothing, right? But I'm not, I haven't gotten to the emergency yet. So, cruise along 11,500, 11, then at 9,500. And we were nearly back to Sanford. In fact, I was about to make my call to Orlando Approach. And I was just about five to seven miles north of Palatka Airport. And all of a sudden on my screen, on my uh, MFD, which is my right hand screen in the Cirrus, I get a low oil pressure light. Now I've never received, well, not only have I never seen a low oil pressure alarm other than, you know, with, with the engine off, um, you know, I had never seen it in flight. And what I realized after the fact was that usually after four hours of flight, remember, I flew to DeLand, and then I flew back to Sanford, and then I flew immediately to Georgia, and now I was on my way back. So it's safe to say I had put easily six, at least six hours on that airplane. And I know my airplane burns about a half a quart every two to three hours. So I got a low oil pressure light. And again, what do you do? I got a passenger with me. And this was probably opportune because um, I'm really pretty proud of the way I handled it. I did not panic. And I think it was because I was thinking of my passenger. You know, what would I think? What, what would he think if I started panicking here? So I called up, I was on Jacksonville Center. And by the way, great job, Jacksonville Center. They were fantastic. Uh, they notified me to look over the nose. Palatka was right there. They asked me if I wanted to declare a, an emergency. And because my engine was still running normally, but I just had a low oil pressure light, there was no need to declare an emergency. I didn't really know what the problem was, but it was not affecting the operation of the engine. But just to be safe, I really wanted to put the plane on the ground. So uh, I canceled my uh, flight following, of course, uh, and announced that I was gonna be landing in Palatka, and then I would notify them on short final that, and let them know that I did in fact get down safe. And that's exactly what I did. I actually cut the power back. I did a power off landing and actually had to do, I'll show you a little picture from my iPad, I actually had to do a 360 to actually drop altitude uh, because I was so high up in the air. I had plenty of time to get down, get in the pattern, do a 360 and actually land in Palatka. So all in all, let me know if you've ever had any kind of an emergency. More importantly, how'd you handle it? 
Here's what I find out. Here's what I found out when, in, in this emergency. I discovered that when you practice something so many times, as in my private pilot, and now in the process, halfway through my IFR training, you practice something enough, it becomes second nature. And I really wasn't panicked. In fact, I got the best compliment in the world from my passenger when we got down on the ground. He said, let me tell you something. I cannot believe how calm you were throughout that entire process. And then when we finally got to the ground, I said, oh, by the way, we landed with no power. I actually pulled the power in the engine, landed the plane, uh, essentially with, with no thrust. And uh, he, he was pretty amazed by that. But it just goes to show that um, general aviation is very safe. Uh, there are very few things that you can get yourself into that you haven't really trained for. It doesn't hurt to actually have your CFI fail the plane, just if, even if you're training for something totally different. You know, just, just train these things and just get them ingrained. I found it was a calm event. I, I really, I doubt my heart rate even rose during the event. It was just, okay, here's the procedure. You know, I didn't, you know, of course I did not uh, squawk any emergency codes because I was fine. The airport was in front of me. I had plenty of altitude. I, I could easily get down on the ground. And more importantly, I didn't want to get that call from the FAA that uh, I had to declare an emergency. Although every in-flight anomaly is an emergency, to me, and it should probably be to everybody watching this video, it really wasn't necessary to declare an emergency in this case. We were so close to the airport. The plane was still running. There was no apparent problem with the engine other than the low pressure, than the low oil pressure light. If you've ever had an emergency or you're a new pilot and you've had your first emergency, I'd love to hear about it. Post it down below and let me know. Like I said, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Um, and most importantly, when you're out there, be safe, fly safe, and land safe every time. Great, have a great day, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.